auto racing and speed in the northeastern portion of the United States. And today, for the first place of a brand new series. Hi everybody, I'm Chris McClure. Welcome to Lime Rock. We're about to witness the inaugural event of the North American Touring Car Championship. A series modeled after the ever popular touring car championships that lap the continent of Europe. Now in this case, we'll be dealing with four-door sedans with two-liter engines that develop well over 300 horsepower. All of the drivers have six-speed sequential gearboxes to work with, and they've all been described as wickedly fast. It ought to be great fun. Now, with more detail on what to expect in this inaugural run at Lime Rock, let's join my colleague, Paul Page. Well, Chris McClure, the excitement has been rippling through the paddock here today before this first ever outing for the Super Touring Series. They are on now to warm up lap. They will come back to aesthetic positions on the pit straight, ready for the standing start, one of the trademarks of this series. One of the drivers in the series, Dominic Dobson from IndyCar. He's excited about it. It's just great racing. You watch it. It's fender to fender, wheel to wheel. You know, we get to lean on each other. You can't do that in IndyCar. It's the Super Touring Championship when we come back.
James on David. <laughs> It's uh, probably more the, the competition and the uh, handling of the cars. They're not they're not huge in horsepower. It's a real momentum car, but man, they handle like you wouldn't believe.
as Millen tried to come down on the inside, he gets into the side of Darren someone makes the slightest mistake, you got to take a little bit more advantage of it than you would in, in, in a different type of car with an uh, Indy car or, or other sedans with all different engine formulas and stuff. And Since everything's all the same here, you really got to work for it and then the, the, the poor sucker you just passed is going to work just as hard to get by you again. So that's where the Phoenix change comes. The son of that great legend coming down the Right now, Scramble, that's the Honda, that's the Pacing Team, and the Working 
less gears and about one half inch of ground clearance. Our newspeed cord is just slammed to the ground. It's got a ring. It's bad to the bone.
Just to loosen up behind the wheel of the guys in the team. I mean, we haven't done a change to the car since I've shown up. And uh, it's all the Chrysler guys and the Pack West folks. And lots of thanks to uh, Bruce McCall and Tom Armstrong and Dominic for getting me involved. This is, this is just splendid. I love it. What a happy young man. Here it is, the Manufacturers Championship, Dodge Honda Dodge. And in the Independence Challenge, it's Steve Petty's BMW. Now we set up for race number two. But I think in the paddock, Chris McClure, everybody must be pleased with race one. Paul Tom Natu is the Director of Marketing and Communications for the series. Couple of questions. First of all, about the cars. They got some pop. Well, these are 300 horsepower, 2 liter engines, and yes, they do have some pop. Uh, they run at 8,500 uh, revs, limited uh, by the rules, and uh, 300 horsepower is enough to get them around this track in a big hurry. What's the standing start stuff all about? Sedans don't start that way. Well, sedans do start that way in Europe, and they start that way in South Africa, Australia, and Japan. Well, I think it's an exciting deal, don't you? I think it is, and I I know the objective is to make it as popular here as it is there, and it's big over there. Oh, well, it's very big over there with, with 11 manufacturers involved worldwide. We've got five of them involved here. By the time we get to Detroit, we'll have six of them involved. And, uh, you know, it's a way for them to promote their mainstream car. That's a mid-size sedan that you're looking at. Four-door, grocery getter, 300 horsepower, purpose built race car. Man, they're just the most exciting things around. I think, I think a lot of people think you need a V8 and many, many cubic inches. And I think a lot of people are going to be surprised how these things, they're only two liters, they're really big engines, and in fact the cars are very fast, they're very impressive, they're real racing cars, and I think the American Attitude is going to warm to this, and they're going to love it, because if it's close racing, it's close racing, and that's, that's what people want to see. We're getting set for the second race of the North American Touring Car Championship. As Paul told you a little while ago, each race weekend consists of two individual events. We have to wonder if we're going to get the same kind of slam-bang action we had just a little while ago. David Donahue and his dive is going for a double, but his teammate Dominic Dobson is going to start from the pole in this one, and I suspect, Paul, he's got his hackles up just a little bit. He's not about to do what he did the first time. This could be even a better battle. Yeah, Chris, I suspect that your suspicions are well-grounded there, David Donahue, and the rest. Uh, Dominic Dobson, who just hired Donahue 
yourself. Three days ago, certainly doesn't want to see his new hire come flying by and take the win like that. Well, they're out on the line, and we'll be ready to go again with race two right after this. I'm Paul Page. We do welcome you back to race number two of this round one of the inaugural Super Touring Championship event here in North America. As the field comes off the warm-up lap and moves into position for the standing start. Downs it on the
they began to fight for third. Outside, take a look at the board. Make sure everything is fine with the crew. exciting it's wheel to wheel you could actually rub a little bit and the whole fender doesn't fall off the car you know it's 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 good clean racing these guys they're nice it's just it's it's a family and it's just good to be with them and I I don't want to miss Detroit I want to be there and I want to be back with my whole family in racing with somebody who needs to go back to driver's school. I was leading the race, the new speed accord was going great. I got a clean start, and I came up behind a slow guy, and he's in the middle of the road, I'm going, oh, left, right, left, right. Finally, I, I, I went left, right out into the grass, and I'm bouncing, and parts are flying. That baby had air, that Michelin is still got air. That's kind of a miracle. I, I don't understand how it held air. But once I saw that, I realized that I've really been more lucky than I was unlucky. Well, Randy, let me explain it to you. BBS wheels, Michelin tires. It's why the Super Touring Championship chose those. At the front, Pac West, Thompson, Donahue. They're the competition. Whatever changes they've made between race number one and this race two certainly paid off for them, though they're still a bit down on energy going down the straight.
championship, putting In fact, it is quite a unique balancing act, but here at Lime Rock, the whole thing is paying off. Now let's go to the pitch, Sam Christopher. Roger Elliott is the general manager. If you see a little sweat on his brow, it's because they've worked very hard, but I think the payoff has started to come. I think we're on the right track, Chris. That's the key thing. What about this first weekend? You, you got a neat, nice field. You got some good tight racing. They swapped a little paint and this and that. Did that pump your adrenaline even more? Oh, there's no doubt about it. This is what super touring racing is all about, and uh, the guys have just done a hell of a job for the first weekend. I would delight it. What about the long term of the, of the entire exercise? What Do you have any objectives, you know, points you'd like to reach at certain points in time? Well, I think the standards are being set elsewhere in the world, and uh, quite clearly the British Touring Car Championship is the pinnacle, and we want to have a program that's every bit as good as that. Well, it's only going to stay for a little bit for American stock car racing. We take a look at the battle for fourth right now. Law and Granlin. There goes Granlin in pursuit. Here are the leaders now as we look back to that battle for fourth place. And watching as Granlin tries to get inside Law. And boy, he gets that done. What a nice move for his headlines. But take a look as Law comes back and gets him on the right hand. Jeff Andretti, we're going to see you in the Touring Car Series, and that's welcome news. What's the plan exactly? Well, we're going to debut at Detroit. Uh, we weren't ready for this weekend. We felt that uh, everything came together a little bit too quickly, that uh, we just wanted to take, slow down and take our time a little more and get the car really ready.
Paul Dominic Dobson just coming up out of the car with a big smile for one of his team members here as they get everything sorted out. Thank you. Right How you doing? Good. After Saturday's aggravation, this has got to feel pretty good. Well, this is the way it was meant to be, I think. You know, Saturday, I, I didn't do a very good job at the start, and I, was, uh, I wasn't going to do that again. So I just want to thank everyone at Dodge, and uh, the Stratus team has been fabulous. My team, PacWest, uh, everybody involved in this thing has worked so hard, and it's just so nice at, at Dodge's track to bring him home one, too. And the winner in the Independence Challenge? He is Steve Petty, and congratulations. Nice run. Thank you. It was, uh, it was uh, harrowing. A little bit of traffic out there, and the car being as hard as it is to drive at top speed, it's, uh, it's a handful. I didn't know if I was going to make it to the end again. Well, here's the way they finish in race number two, and of course, as you just saw, Steve Petty takes the uh, win in the Independence Challenge. So, the points championship is now tied at the top between the two Pat West drivers. That's going to make for some interesting confrontation when they go next to Belle Isle in Detroit. Folks finishes in third, and here is the way it is in the Michelin Manufacturers Cup with Dodge out in front by eight points over Honda. So the very first race is now complete, and I'll tell you what, it was a day well worthwhile. Where do they go next? Detroit, and here is the rest of the schedule. Perhaps we'll see with one of these races. I'm Paul Page. See you soon at the race. Race.